Hey guys, today um, I'll tie a little bait fish streamer for you for pike fishing. I like this one here, that's the one we tie today. A really easy streamer, I'll just tie it as quick as possible so the video is not go getting too long. Um, we'll tie it out from uh, bait fish fiber, um, some bait fish fiber fine. I made already a brush out of it uh, with some stainless steel wire and we do a little bit of knot on the back and we do a nice thin hat with some monster dot and um, give it a really thin hat so the uh, fly is uh, jerking a bit in the water. So we start with a little bit of glue on the hook just do some quick windings on the hook shank we're actually tying on a Variva's Big Mouth 6L. It's a thick wired hook, but quite a nice big gap. I really like it. It's a decent hook for, for the money. And uh, yeah, never had problems with it. Really like it. So if you're looking for a good pike hook, which is a little bit more heavier, brings the fly a little bit faster down, um, this is definitely a good choice. So we start with the uh, Big streamer, uh, no, with the uh, baitfish fiber. Um, just cut it in half, tape it a bit like that. Really easy, and then just tie it in. Uh, so you leave a little bit over at the end. So we're just supporting our main material and uh, just go quite a decent way down the hook shank, maybe a centimeter, one and a half. Fold it back and then just catch the tail and brush it out a bit. Now we do need a little bit of flesh, which I forgot. Here we go again. Um, that's just some curl flesh. I don't know exactly. Ah, oh, it's polar flesh. I don't really care about the flesh material, just use everything that is shiny um, but this polar flesh is quite a nice material it's a little bit crinkled catches a little bit more light than the usual material so we just tie it on uh, tie it the same length of the tail and then just fold the rest of the material back and tie it down again so our tail is finished right now when we take our dubbing brush you can also do it with thread but I've pre-made them so I can tie a bunch of them. I do uh, use my Stonefall dubbing brush device for that. And I like to have my dubbing brushes with uh, stainless steel, especially in my pike streamers. just gives it a little bit more stability. And, uh, and when the pike is hitting the streamer, sometimes if you use usual thread, they can just open it. Uh, they cut the thread and uh, then the uh, dubbing brush is getting used. Um, you can just save that with a little bit of super glue and stuff like that. But I just do like my stainless steel. Also gives it a little bit more weight. Brings the fly down. So everyone has his preferences and it really goes quick. You just go around it a few times. Depends on how much material you're catching your, in your brush and I'm just Tie that down and then I've got another thing here, got my nice little knipex and just cut it off. Be careful with the wire at the end, not to cut your thread. Just tie it down and then reverse the thread a bit, which is pushing the material together. And because from the brush we're standing up in a 90 degree angle, if you're moving the thread bed, uh, backwards a bit, it's just li lifting the fibers a bit and pushing them together so we have a dense dense volume here and that we can brush out a bit to get all the uh, trap fibers out but this section here is the part which is um, giving us volume and um, credits where credits belong I saw a similar pattern from Paul and really liked it um, I just like to use for my head material some uh, monster dab and I do love jerk flies. So this is the uh, rest of the material. We just tie it in here 
on the uh, on the front and then turn the fly, fold the material back, tie it down like that. So I saw the, a similar fly at Paul's 10 minute tire something like that. Um, don't know if it's the same material, but probably similar synthetic material. Um, oh yeah, I like the fly and uh, just kind of type my own version with a really quick fly. Nice fly to fill up your box. Um, so I'll make sure you check out his fly as well. So um, this is our body now. We do a little bit of night on top of it to uh, get a little bit darker grayish color in the uh, tile section. Really easy. Just cut a bit of it. Take the ends, brush the underfur out. Don't need any underfur in. And then I tie it in reverse like that. And I just, you see, it's nearly as long as the whole fly. Fold it back. This is actually giving us the shape of our back of the fly. Gives it a little bit nicer straight shape because the now it's not as curly as the uh, other material as the um, baitfish fiber and I also like the difference of the two colors playing together so now it's just nearly finished we just have to do our hair we just take our monster dab out this is a um, baitfish belly really like that color for uh, yeah better making bellies of baitfish and you just align the fibers um, just mixing up the colors a little bit more and um, just turn the fly around and tie the baitfish belly on the belly of course just a few quick ties and take some gray out I like to uh, cut the edges of my bags so I can just pull the material out Just tie that on in as well. And then we move the thread back all the way to the beginning to uh, get it really dense again. And we want to have a flat head. So just use a little bit of glue. Make a knot into the glue. Easy as that. And just brush it in shape. Move it back with the fingers. So, and now what you can do, you want to put your eyes on. I'm using for this kind of hats now a tear member. Um, because I want to get a little jerk head of it, really flat. Um, you can use a clip like that to uh, get the hairs out of the way. And then just use a bit of the tear mender. Just all the way around. Again, really easy. And then you just have to get some eyes. Uh, this 3D eyes, also really easy to use. Just stick them on like that. Now I like to uh, press the uh, eyes a little bit tighter and loosen them again with my fingers, so the uh, tear member is soaking through the whole material. And then I use a really strong, I think it's a kind of a book clamp or something like that for a paper, but it's really strong. And uh, I like to press my eyes really tight together, loosen the clamp at the back, brush it in position like I want to have it. 
and then just let it dry. The fly is finished and ready to fish. I'm going to show you the ready fly. That's how it's looking when it's uh, finished. And of course, you can tie it in different colors as well.